I got wood, I got tools. Let's make a pocket hole jig. It's filming it Friday. I watch a lot of YouTube woodworking videos and many people use pocket hole jigs. So I decided to make my own. So I found this one on Thingiverse from user Jemimer. I decided to try this on my stock DaVinci and then I was going to do it again on my Repetier. So I brought in the STL file into XYZWare, set it to 25% fill, 0.2 layer height, no supports, and exported it. And everything matched up and it said it was going to take 3 hours and 44 minutes and 17 meters of plastic. So I used the same filament cartridge on my Repetier machine, 0.2 layer height, 25% fill, and it didn't look any different. Very, very little difference. But I needed to add metal inserts to this to guide the bit. I'm going to use these copper couplings for quarter inch pipe. The problem is they got a little nub inside, so when you put the pipe in, it stops about halfway. So I'm going to need to ground, grind those down. So I'm going to use my little die grinder that I printed a 3D printed a stand for in a previous Filament Friday video. I put the sanding disc on the end of it and now I'll just grind inside. And now I can try it on the drill bit. Still just a little bit tight. So a little more grinding and we'll be all set. Now I've only got one set of these inserts so I have to pick which jig to use. And they're really not too much different. The print quality in both cases is pretty good. The words are a little clearer on the Repetier version and the, the circular holes are a little more round, but not a big difference. Underneath, they're about the same. I think the top of this uh, Repetier one looks a little better, so I'm going to go with that first, and if I screw it up, I have a backup. So the way I'm going to insert it is to heat up the copper tubing and then push it into the hole. And to do that, I'm using my soldering iron. I actually slipped the copper tubing over the soldering iron and it's getting hot. And so then what I'm going to do is start it, pull the soldering iron out, and then I'm going to use this block of wood to push it the rest of the way in. Hopefully this works. So I get the wood lined up. This is very hot. I can see it. It's changing color. So I'll just push that right in, get it started. Wow, I can push it almost all the way in with this. And then I'll finish it off. And there we go. We have an insert. It looks like I got a, just a slight amount of splitting right along a, a print line, a layer line. But overall, it looks pretty good. Let me try the drill bit. Oh yeah, look at that. This looks really good. Now I'll do the other one. And there we have it. Two metal inserts on my pocket hole jig. They're still a little bit warm, so it's going to take a little bit to cool off. But it looks really good. And the drill bit goes right in. So this should be interesting to see how well this works. But I'll tell you what, that looks as good as some of the stuff I've seen in the store. This is really a nice design. And it cost me two dollars, maybe, total. So this could be a real handy tool. But now we got to test it out, and I'll test it on this piece of wood. Okay, so I got a piece of wood clamped down, and then I'll put the jig right here and clamp it down. But before I did that, I wanted to show you how I positioned this piece of tape. This is very important because when I run this through, I only want the end of this bit to just to go just past the end of the block. So I positioned a piece of electrical tape right there and that actually stops it from going too far. Now the real pocket hole jig has an adjustable metal thing you can put on there, but this tape seems to be working pretty good. 
So I just need to clamp this down and then I'll put a hole on one end and then I'll move it and I'll put one on the other end. I'm ready to try it out. Looks pretty good. That looks like a pocket hole. I'll do one on the other side. All right, we're not ready for the next hole. Well, this is working easy. Let me show you this. Two perfect pocket holes. And it just comes out the end for the screw to go through. Ah, this is a winner. This is a total winner. I think what I'll do is I'll go to my uh, scroll saw and I'll cut a section so you can see what this thing looks up looks like up close. So here it is with a screw going through it. It comes down like this and gets tightened up and comes to the end. Let me take this off and this is what it looks like. It's going to tighten against the, the edge, that little hole that was left by the tip of the bit. And then the head of the screw holds it in place. And that gives you a nice pocket hole. And this is flush. So it worked really, really well. Okay, so now the most important part, connecting the wood together. So now i got my impact screwdriver. And I got a screw lined up, got my wood all clamped down, and I'll just drive it in. Another screw. A nice, solid joint. And overall, it worked pretty well. Now what I could probably do now is make a couple different ones of different widths and even maybe different angles for thicker wood. There's so many different things that I can do now that I can print my own pocket hole jigs. Now I am by no means an experienced woodworker. I've done some woodworking projects, but that's why I watch the YouTube channels to learn. But this was really a lot of fun. It wasn't so much about saving money. I just wanted to see if I could 3D print my own tool, my own pocket hole jig. And like I said, now I can make different sizes and custom shapes, whatever I want, and it really isn't going to cost me a whole lot. And with the metal inserts, that was a new experiment for me. I've done metal inserts while it's printing, where I put a nut inside of it and made a, a wing nut for my snowblower. Did that several videos ago. But this is the first time I've actually inserted metal by heating it up and pushing it in. And I'll tell you what, that worked really well. I don't know, this, this just brings up so many possibilities. This was a lot of fun, and I think this was a great 3D print. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And sometime during this video, we're going to cross 3,000 subscribers. I've really been doing this just a little over a year, like maybe two weeks more than a year. And about this time a year ago, I had less than 10 subscribers. I mean, I was just starting out. Now I've got 3,000. So thank you to all my viewers. Special thank you to all my subscribers. And a very special thank you to all my Patreon supporters and all those who have silently donated to my YouTube channel. This has been amazing to watch this thing grow, and I hope I keep delivering what you guys want to watch. Anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll see you next time.